hello, this is Celeste here, and there's something I wanted to talk about today. Oh, oh, sorry if I wiggle a lot. You know, when you hit a certain age and like you can think about something the wrong way and your back hurts, I just am having one of those days where I don't know what I did, but my back hurts. And it's hard to find any place that's comfortable right now. But anyway, what I'm here to talk about today is something that struck my interest right away. It just, I heard about it and it instantly caught my attention and I knew I had to learn more about it. It also is something that kind of freaks me out a little bit. So today I'm going to be talking about Havana syndrome and Havana syndrome is medical symptoms that were experienced by mainly military personnel in Havana, Cuba, and U.S. and Canadian embassies there. Havana syndrome was first reported in 2016, so fairly recently. The cause of the illness and the symptoms remain a mystery to this day. It has not fully been resolved as to what causes it. There's been a lot of speculation and confusing reports that postulate on the cause, however. Symptoms were not just confined to Cuba. Since 2017, there were reports from China, New Delhi, India, Europe, and Washington, D.C. There are a lot of people who doubt the validity of the illness and they think that it has a psychological rather than physiological basis, but we'll talk a little bit more about that. So the U.S. Department of Health has described the reports as unexplained health incidents, but the CIA director was quoted publicly as calling them attacks. What is confusing about this syndrome is that there's really no consensus about it at all. The symptoms are fairly consistent across many of the victims and the reported cases, and they occur in pockets of people that were located in the same geographic locations. So that makes it seem like an actual thing. Because it isn't known what is causing the syndrome or the symptoms, we don't know if it is some kind of an attack. In December of 2020, an expert with the National Academics of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine came to the conclusion that microwave energy, specifically pulsed RF energy, seemed to be the most likely cause that would explain these cases and the symptoms, but they also said that any possible cause at this time is just speculation. At the time, some of the other causes that were initially proposed included ultrasound, pesticides, or a mass psychogenic illness. So let's say you're one of those people that you hear about a new syndrome or illness and you Google it to see if you have it. So if you're one of those people looking up to see if you have the disease and see if you may have Havana syndrome, if you have pain, or ringing in your ears, and this can be one ear or both ears. Other symptoms include feelings of pressure or vibrations in the head and vertigo. And less common symptoms are fatigue and headaches. Earlier this year, a report was released saying that the syndrome was likely caused by pulsed electromagnetic energy that was directed through focused radio waves. So this was early in 2022. This is a really important development in the understanding of Havana syndrome, especially for its victims, because it was originally thought to be some kind of mass psychogenic illness or what used to be called mass hysteria. So this is sort of proving that what the people were experiencing was real. And I am not discounting psychogenic illnesses as real. This is not these are not people that are faking or making it up. If they have a psychogenic illness, they are really experiencing those symptoms in their body. It's just not caused by a physical symptom. So they're not fakers. They're not making it up. They're not, you know, attracting drama. These are people that are actually experiencing horrible physical symptoms. It's just that the, the cause of it is psychological as opposed to physical. But in this case, the newest reports say this is, it does have an organic physical basis. It's not a psychological mass event. 
this new report was really validating for the people, um, the experiences and the symptoms that the victims have experienced as being caused by something outside of the people who are experiencing it. It is supported by the fact that the syndrome was experienced by pockets of people in different areas. So a bunch of people in one area would experience the same symptoms, these pockets of people. And then in other geographic locations, another pocket of people would all be experiencing the same thing. And the people, the people in those specific locations were reporting the same or similar symptoms and experiences as each other. So all these people were agreeing that they were all experiencing roughly the same thing at the same time in these pockets. So all in all, since it was first reported in 2016, over 1,000 U.S. employees who worked in U.S. intelligence agencies such as the CIA, the FBI, and the U.S. State Department have reported having experienced symptoms. Now, Havana syndrome is largely an invisible illness for the most part. Symptoms are experienced and self-reported with very little physical evidence to support the experience that these people had. However, in a panel that examined the syndrome and had interviewed at least 20 of the people suffering from it, the panel reportedly did find some injuries that the patients had suffered that could not have been caused by stress or some kind of psychosomatic reaction. So they did, in some of these cases, find actual physical evidence of this syndrome. Although it was initially thought that the symptoms could be the result of an attack by Russia or another foreign power, a recent report declared that this is an unlikely scenario. A report by the CIA in January 2022 said that the syndrome is not the result of a, quote, sustained global campaign by a hostile power and they were able to rule out foreign involvement in 976 out of the 1,000 cases reviewed, which is overwhelmingly the majority. But I don't know, what I don't know is how they were able to rule this out, how they were definitively able to say that it was not because they don't know what it was. And that's what's confusing to me. How did they rule it out? I don't know. Also, I'm sorry if you hear my birds in the background is noisy little things. Anytime I try to do anything that requires, you know, any kind of silence, they chirp right up. If you ever run into me playing video games online, you're definitely going to hear them in the background. <laughs> um, yeah, especially population one. Sorry to anyone I've ever played with, you're going to hear my birds. <laughs> For victims of Havana syndrome, there has been some relief from the more debilitating symptoms such as tinnitus. Tinnitus? I think I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's one of those words where I've read it a lot, but I haven't heard it said a lot. So I'm kind of guessing on the pronunciation. You ever have that happen where you're like reading things so often and you kind of pronounce it away in your head and then it turns out to be totally wrong? Yeah. So a lot of my mispronunciations of things comes from reading the word and knowing it through word reading and not from hearing it. But anyway, some of the victims reported that the experience they had with this symptom was greatly reduced or helped or they experienced it less often after spending time in a sound booth that matched the exact frequency of the ringing that sound that they were hearing in their ears. So they go in the sound booth and if they were able to exactly match the frequency of the ringing in their ears, which is what tinnitus is, then they were able to get some relief from the symptom, which is kind of cool. Other individuals reported that they no longer experienced tinnitus while wearing hearing aids. So hearing aids really helped them or got rid of it altogether. This is a confusing yet fascinating ailment and I really hope that the origin can be determined and that there are no more cases. It sounds horrible to be honest. I would hate it like this constant ringing in your ears. I know a lot of people have that. And that would just, I'm one of those people, I hate white noise. I hate it. I don't like fans. I don't like wind. <laughs> All those things I just am bothered by any white noise. So a constant ringing in my ears would really like get to me a lot. So what do you think about Havana syndrome? Have you heard of it before? What do you think could possibly cause it? And if you have any other info on how they were 
discovering this, I would love to hear it. Please let me know if you know how they are able to rule out foreign power involvement and if there's any new developments on the symptoms or the origin. I would love to hear about it if I don't come across it on my own.